and that'll tell you exactly how many dry contacts you need. And all this does is when you put a wire to this side and then come out this side of it, it closes and makes contact similar to when you turn on your light in your house and it lets the electricity flow through. And we're going to use that to power up this power strip because we're going to energize this coil off our ATX power supply and we don't want power here until we turn this switch on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to represent because you can't put white on a whiteboard we're going to represent orange is going to be our white from this cable. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the white from this cable and you're going to put it to the normally one set of normally open contacts. And then you're going to take this white and you're going to bring it under that same screw terminal for normally open contacts. Now remember, these two cables have three wires each. Interruption. Okay, next, you're going to take your black wire out of each whip and you're going to run that to the one side of a normally open contact. Now don't get these contacts confused. You do not want to run the white on one side of the normally open and the black on the other. That's not good because when you fire up this switch, bang, that's a dead short. They need to go to one side and parallel them under each terminal screw. Okay, what we need to do next is you have to have a terminal strip installed down here. And you're going to have to look at my Facebook page, which the link is in the description below, to get there and look for the pictures. You're going to have to get one of the plastic power strips with the metal screws because it comes with jumpers in it. And you're going to have to take jumpers you're going to have to decide and divide this out. What I did is I took my first two screws and that's for my grounds. I took the next three set of screws and that's for my hots or my blacks. Is your hot, your 120 volt. And then the last three screws are my neutrals or your white. So what you do is you take the grounds out of these two cables and you run them down across from your terminal strip. And it doesn't matter, you can put them under the same screw or two screws. You're going to have to double up on some of these probably anyway unless you get a like a 12 terminal strip or whatnot. So what you need to do on the other side of your terminal strip is you need to put these jumpers in. You're going to pair two for your grounds. You're going to pair three for your hots. And three for your neutrals. Now if you have terminal strips laying around and you don't have the metal jumpers that come provided, you can always make your own jumpers with crimps and just jump in between your screws. So what that does is, like I brought these grounds down, these are common between each other because they're looped on the other side. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick off 12 volts off this terminal strip and power this coil. And that's really simple. You take one of your yellows and you put it to one side of your coil. Now remember, your relay will have a diagram will tell you which two terminal screws are for your coil. Then you're going to take a ground and that's going to connect to the other side of your coil. And it doesn't matter which side of your coil. Say it gives you a number 7 and a number 9. You can hook either one to either screw terminal. Alright, so we've got our power coming in to our relays. And we've got power to our coil and we've got our switch wired in. Our next step is we need to get the power as it comes into here when this switch is turned on to energize our power strip, our 120 volts. So what you do there, you're going to come across whatever terminal coincides 
With this normally open contact, say it's one and three, say this is one and this three, you're going to come off this side and you're going to come down here and that's going to go to your neutral bar, the set you made here for your neutrals. Then you're going to take your other side, say this is two and five, normally open contact, and you're going to take that wire and you're going to bring that down and hook that to the 120 volt part of your power strip. Because remember, we paired up these three terminals, so that means these three here for our neutrals. These three here are paired for our hots, our 120 volt, and these two are paired for our grounds. Make sure everything is grounded. What you also should do, speaking of grounds, is come off here with another wire and put a screw into your metal box. I'm assuming you're using metal. And ground your system to the box so you don't have any issues down the road. So our next step, we want to get power from our 120 volt power strip to our two power supplies, our 36 volt 10 amp power supplies. So, you can make this real simple. What I did was I came off one of the ground terminal screws and don't be afraid you can still put a wire under the other side with the jumper it doesn't matter it will still work it just makes these four screws your grounds and similar these six screws are your hots and these six screws here are your neutrals so you're going to take your grounds you come off one of these screws or you could come off your grounded screw your bonded screw from your box which to make things simple that's what we'll do. We'll just come off that same screw with another wire and we go to our first power supply. We'll call this power supply number one, power supply number two. Then all I did was I made a jumper. I came off this ground and I came down and I contacted it under the ground screw number three for the other power supply. And by now you should see where this is going. So next, we'll take one of the blacks from that screw, bring that up, and on my power supplies, which there should be two, the first screw is your line represented with an L, which is your 120 volt side or your black. Then you'll take and make a jumper off that to come down to your other power supply. I went a little far there. And you will put that under your power supply. And then you'll come off your neutral and you'll go under terminal number two, which is marked with an N. Then you'll make a jumper and the same thing. You'll come down here into there. Now when doing this, you don't have to use separate conductors. You can take an old extension cord or anything that has a white, black, and a green in it. And you can just strip the ends so you can make your connections here, lace it into your control box, bring it over here, and then make another one and go here. Then that would keep you with one cable which has your three wires needed to get over to here. And then you can cut a short strip to do the same here. So you have a cable, just strip your ends and put them under your terminals. It'll help make things a little bit neater. So now what's going to happen, you plug in your power, you turn on your switch. When you turn on the switch, there's a sensor in your power supply which senses that and it powers this up. In doing so, it sends power to your 12 volt wires, which are your yellows, and it sends power to your red wires, which is your 5 volts. And your grounds are your grounds, they're always ground. When that fires up, this coil energizes. When that coil energizes, these two contact points, they close. This allows your power to come down and energize your 120 volt power strip. Once that energizes, 
That sends your power out to your 36 volt power supplies. And so that concludes today's part two of build your own CNC router control box. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget, down below in the description is a link to my Facebook page. You need to go there to get further information and to get all the drawings needed. It also lists all the suppliers. Thank you and have a great day.